good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. I love coming to you. I love coming to you and bringing you music. And I love it when things work the way that they're supposed to. So remember that big storm we had? That really big storm that we had that actually wiped out Bank Street? Well, that day, the band that was supposed to play tonight had a tree fall on their van. <laughs> and I got told about that on Thursday. And that's, that's very short notice. But needless to say, Friday was past the guitar. I had told you all about past guitar in downtown New London. We always go to past the guitar. I've emceed it for the last six years. And there's always amazing musicians. Every once in a while, Hugh Birdsall sneaks a new one in that I've never seen or heard. So what happened was a new one got snuck in. Poor guy didn't know what was coming at him when I came up to him and I said, so I have this TV show. So he agreed. He's a real sweetheart. We're going to talk about a lot more things than just his music. I think you'll find it very interesting. And certainly it's community minded. You know how I feel about our community. So please help me welcome into your homes and into your hearts, David Horst. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. I hear music in the air There must be a God somewhere Over my head I hear music in the air Over my head I hear music in the air Over my head I hear music in the air There must be a God somewhere when I'm feeling lonely, there is music in the air. Oh, when I'm feeling lonely, there is music in the air. Oh, when I'm feeling lonely, there is music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. I hear music in the air, there must be a God somewhere. Oh, when I think of Jesus, there is music in the air. Oh, when I think of Jesus, there is music in the air. Oh, when I think of Jesus, there is music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Woohoo! Thank you all. It's great to be with you, sharing some music and sharing some time on Grandma's Attic program. My name is David Horst, kind of new to the New London area, happy to have a chance to uh, be with you and share some songs and share some of my stories. The songs I've selected today deal uh, with desire and our human yearning, yearning for love and learning for community, yearning even for the divine, always holding out hope for something more, for that better future. Here's another spiritual I love to sing. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Well, if I could, I surely would stand on the rock where Moses stood. Pharaoh's army got crowned. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan.
army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. One of these nights about 12 o'clock, this old world's going to reel and rock. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Now Moses stood on the Red Sea shore, smote the water with the two by four. Pharaoh's army got Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Sisters and brothers, don't you cry. There'll be good times by and by. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army got Thank you. One more verse to that. Oh, God gave Moses the rainbow sign. No more water, the fire next time. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Oh, Mary, don't you weep, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army got grounded. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. To have that last verse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so much of American music and particularly country music began with the Carter family, who were identified as the in the early days of country music, but of course they drew from many sources, including the blues. We wouldn't have American music without the blues. And this is a song that they sang and everybody since the Carter family. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. Sing a worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. I went across the river. I lay down to sleep. I went across the river. I lay down to sleep. I went across the river. I lay down to sleep. When I woke up, I had shackles on my feet. Twenty-nine links, chain around my leg. Twenty-nine links of chain around my leg. Twenty-nine links, chain around my leg. The initial of my name. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. I ask that judge, what will be my fine? I ask that judge. What will be my fine? I ask that judge, what will be my fine? 29 years on the Alsea mountain line. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. Man blues. You know, if you sing a song long enough, and most of these songs I've sung hmm, many years ago, they become who you are. They become your songs and my songs. And uh, everything I'm sharing with you today, these spirituals, these blues-influenced songs, country songs, have been a part of my life for a long, long time. 
And I love this song. It's a country song, but it is a bluesy song, too. Blues, stay away from me. Blues, stay away from me. Blues, why don't you let me be? Don't know why you keep on haunting me. Love. song that'll bring you down or cheer you up. I'm not sure, depending on how you're feeling that day. Blues, stay away from me. I miss, still miss someone, another song that's been a part of me for many years. It's the perfect heartbreak song by Johnny Cash. At my door Sweethearts walk by together, but I still miss someone. No, I never got over those blue eyes. I see. I miss those arms that help me when all the love was there. When I go out to a party, I'm looking for a little fun, but I find Cause I still miss someone Though I never got over those blue eyes I see them everywhere I miss those arms that held me When all the love was there I wonder if she's sorry for leaving what we had begun. There's someone for me somewhere, but 
but I still miss someone. Though I never got over those blue eyes, I see them everywhere. I miss those arms that held me when all the love was there. When all the love was there. I still miss someone. Oh, I think I'm in a, a sad, mournful mood here. Ew. Let me sing another old country song I just love. Remember me. Remembering and yearning for lost loves the way things used to be, lost dreams, lost hopes. But somehow we carry on. We carry on because we sing the sad songs. Mm. The sweetest songs belong to lovers in the gloaming. The sweetest days were the days that used to be. The saddest words I ever heard when you said, sweetheart, remember me, remember me, when the candlelights are gleaming, remember me, at the close of a long, long day, it'll be so sweet, when all alone I'm dreaming, just to know you still told me once that you were mine, alone forever, and I was yours till the end of eternity, but all those vows are broken now, and you will never be the same except in memory. Remember me when the candlelights are gleaming. Remember me at the close of a long, long day. It'll be so sweet when all alone I'm dreaming. Just to know you still remember me. A brighter face may take my place when we're apart, dear. Another love with a heart more bold and free. But in the end, fair weather friends, they'll break your heart, dear. And if they do, sweetheart, remember me. Remember me when the candlelights are gleaming. Remember me at the close of a long, long day. It'll be so sweet when all alone I'm dreaming. Just to know you still remember me. Just to know you still remember me. Oh, please remember me. Up in the morning, out on the job, work like the devil for my pay. But that lucky old son ain't got nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. A fuss with my woman toil for my kid, sweat till I'm wrinkled and gray. But that lucky old son, it's got nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. Lord above, can't you see that I'm crying? Tears are in my 
my eyes Setting on the cloud With a silver lining Take me to paradise Show me the river Lead me across Take all my troubles away and like the lucky old son, give me nothing to do but roll around heaven all day. That's a song that Ray Charles made famous. Uh, Willie Nelson uh, sang it as well. And uh, a song I've been singing for years, never get tired of it either. Let me finish this part of the program with uh, another spiritual. There's a balm in Gilead. Sometimes I feel discouraged and feel my life's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit invites my soul again. There is a balm in Gilead that makes my spirit whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal my sin-sick soul. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus is all to save us all. There is a balm in Gilead to make my spirit whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Thank you. Nice. So you're gonna come over and sit and talk. I'm gonna with come me? over and talk now. Awesome. Thank you. So while David's coming over and getting hooked up and mic'd up, let me just remind you all that there are wonderful things going on, all kinds of great shopping experiences in downtown New London. The galleries are open. They're full of wonderful gifts that you can plan for your holiday season. Do you know how important it is to shop local? Remember, shopping local keeps the money local and builds our economy. That's really important and especially in this day and age we just had a local election everybody thinks it went really well so let's support our local economy and make this city grow all right i'm going to talk to david now hi david Hello. welcome to grandma's attic good to be here how cool <laughs> how cool so i don't know you at all i see you at Pass the Guitar, number one, if you um, offer to play for Pass the Guitar, it means you have to have some kind of goodness in you. <laughs> then 
then I hear that you work at the Homeless Hospitality Center. And I'm like, I didn't know anything about you. Emceeing a show when you don't know anything about the people that are in it is really hard. Right. It's, it's hard. You have to kind of engage the audience with nothingness. Because right. I, didn't, I didn't know you. But what I did find out about you was that you worked at the hospitality center. Our homeless hospitality center is one of the best in the state. We have people that really care there. And um, what brought you to New London? Okay. Well, first, thank you for welcoming me, in, welcoming me into Grandma's Attic. I thank feel like you. I'm part of your family now. Just you like absolutely that. are. Thank you. From the moment we met and you introduced me, I'm so, so glad to be a part of that. My family and I have uh, moved um, uh, a bit in New England uh, and uh, North Jersey in the past few years. Uh, but as my previous uh, job completed uh, in New Jersey, uh, we wanted to come back to New England and we searched around and we chose New London, Norwich, this area uh, as a place to live. We have a son in high school and uh, a good place to work and to have our family and to engage in the community as we are, as we are doing. So New London brought you to school. You know that we have um, one of the top um, school systems in the country. That's yes. what they've told us, yes. is that we're the third in the country. Yeah. And we discovered Norwich. We looked in New London, and we discovered Norwich and Norwich Free Academy, where our son that's is going. That's a good song. Which that's is also a, very good that's school, a, too. That's a good school, too. I'm not going to knock Norwich Free Academy. We've got too many musicians that come from there. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about the area, you know, there's the rural areas, there's the city. It's a very diverse area. Um, the arts are strong here. It's it, there's a lot of history here. All the things that we love. That's wonderful. The Rose Garden in Norwich is yes. also very beautiful. Have you spent any time yes, there I've yet? Yes, I've been up to the park. Yeah, oh, really my goodness. I love the Rose Garden. I have really great pictures from there. So you came here. Did you know that you were going to end up in the job that you're in now? We won't disclose that yet. Well, we kind of okay. we oh, kind of sort of have, but... Well, let me tell you briefly my background on how I, um, how I came to this work at the New London uh, uh, Homeless Hospitality Center. So I've been in ministry for 20 years okay, and uh, serving congregations in the Boston area. And it was a couple years on Nantucket and then uh, in North Jersey. And that part of my career, my life, my ministry came to a very nice close. And um, I felt really called to be working in human services. Okay. Um, and though um, I have experience in ministry and in counseling, I've never done direct human services. So it was a bit of a, of a leap. Um, uh, yeah, I was just going to say you dived right in, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. So um, I was introduced to the folks at the Homeless Hospitality Center, met, met Kathy Zoll, the uh, executive director. She's a peach, isn't yeah. she? Yeah, and told her of my background and my desire to uh, work with clients, to work one-on-one -on -one with people. So she uh, provided me that opportunity. So um, I brought some skills, I think, but also uh, learning a lot by the day. And uh, you know, immediately impressed by uh, the human service network that is in this area throughout the county. We have a great uh, one. Yeah, we do. And whatever you know, whether you're um, chronically homeless or facing uh, mental health challenges, medical issues, uh, there's so much help here, uh, so much goodness, and people ready to help. Um, and um, I'm just really impressed by that. And I think that's what makes this community a really vital one because we take care of each other. I've seen, I've seen that in this community in, in many, many ways. I went through kind of a brief, rough spot last year. Mm -hmm. And the way that the community stepped up to the plate to take care of me yes. when I was in my darkest, mm. my darkest time of my life, it was amazing. But I already knew, I already knew that this community was, mm -hmm. was big and strong. I've wanted to live in this community all my life and when i finally was given the opportunity to finally buy my home here mm. he, it was it was here that i wanted to buy it so i live right in the downtown area right where we see the homeland homelessness mm -hmm. the drug problems the um poverty mm -hmm. yet also the richness of the arts and the right. richness of right. community so um Let's talk a little bit about your music, and then I want to get back to um, community and the Homeless Hospitality Center. I, want, I really want to talk a lot about that. I want okay. us to um, let people know about the hope that, that the Hospitality Center brings to mm -hmm. us. But let's talk a little bit about your music. How long have you been playing music? Well, it began when I joined the Folk Music Club in high school. Nice! And I learned to play guitar at that point. Um, 
and you know, largely self-taught. I love to sing, always have been singing since church days and really throughout my life, but mm -hmm. the ability to accompany myself was wonderful. And yes, the um, music teacher and the head of the, um, of the uh, folk music club happened to be a gorgeous redhead. So that, that, didn't, that, that didn't certainly stop piqued you, my right? interest. Yeah, <laughs> and this was um, this was in the '70s, so we were at the tail end of the folk music revival, right? And we sang all the classic folk songs. So oh, I learned I to bet. strum the guitar, I and then bet. somehow in high school I landed in a bluegrass band. Um, so and really fell in love with that music as well. And all that time I've always done choral singing. Mm -hmm. uh, in high school and throughout, I've been a big promoter of choral music uh, as well. And then um, sung some old-time country music for a while. Uh, I've, I've uh, loved children's music. Um, so I've kind of moved around when I'm in, certainly when I'm in church and a part of worship, I love to sing, whether it's a traditional hymn or something more contemporary. But um, it is really, singing is really central to who I am. Do you find that music has kind of, um, kind of changed over the decades in um, contemporary church music? Well, in my tradition, which is a, a liberal, a very liberal tradition, we, we draw from a lot of different kinds of music. So we mm -hmm. do old Christian hymns, we draw from the Jewish tradition, um, and newer tunes as well. But in congregational singing, the, the most important thing is that it's singable. Right, 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 <laughs> and right. And that everyone, whatever their ability, can join in because um, music is so much a part of that experience. I know when I sing, it's kind of a spiritual experience uh, oh, for me because I'm for very me too. focused for me too. and uh, it, your, your whole body resonates and you know we are given this remarkable instrument. And again, whatever one's level of ability, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the enthusiasm and the feeling that's behind it. And you see that, you see that in, in different congregations across the country and right. um, it changes kind of from the deep south to, I went to a, um, all African American church in Washington D.C., mm -hmm. and the experience was extremely right. moving compared to. I was born and brought up in a Northern Baptist, mm -hmm. Northern Baptist. <laughs> We're talking conservative. The box is this big, mm -hmm. and you don't get out of it. Right. Northern Baptist church. So to see the way, even though every woman in there had a hat and was dressed to the nines, mm -hmm. when they started singing. It was a party going on, right? And right. that was different. It was yeah. different for me, but mm. I love to see what all the different communities do, and I love to see that you're bringing music into into the homeless hospitality center, mm -hmm. and that you brought it to Pass Guitar. How did you end up at Pass Guitar? Well, um, um, I'm uh, affiliated with uh, All Souls, the Unitarian Universalist congregation okay. in New London, mm -hmm. and. Um, Actually, bef long before we moved here, I saw the poster and I thought, I want to be a part of that. Pass the whatever, guitar poster? But it, yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> it, 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 it had been hosted at All Souls. It moved this year. And uh, so after I arrived, uh, I guess I talked to the minister at All Souls, Carolyn, yep, and Carolyn. also the development and communications person at uh, the Homeless Hospitality Center, Barbara Montrose. And I said, how can I be a part? So they gave me Hugh's email um, and I wrote to him very formal request asking if I could be a part. I got an immediate response. He said, sure. Yeah, and Hughes, that Hughes, was all. <laughs> and I said, do I have to audition? Do I have to do? You're in. He's wonderful. Yeah. He's wonderful like that. That felt really good. And he didn't even want to hear your music. He just assumed. He took it on faith. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. So before I introduced yeah, you. Yeah. And then I heard you sing. Well, you know, and I mean, I love to sing. Um, uh, I'm like everybody. I don't like to practice much, but I love to perform. So I welcome the chance to pull, pull some music together as I did today and have the chance to sing again. So thank you for that opportunity. Absolutely. It yeah. pushed your buttons a little yeah, bit. Yeah, got me moving. Stretched you a little thank bit. Thank you. Why do you play 12 string? Oh, because uh, it's loud. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be loud, and um, what I so um, uh, what I uh, what I uh, lack in technique, I hope I can make up in volume. There's a saying I've always carried with me: um, it, 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 it's if you can't do it, if you can't do it good, do it big. And I translate that: if you can't can't do it uh, do it good, do it loud. And I think you do it very well. But there's another thing about the twelve sting: it just feels good under the fingers, and you get a lot of sound. 
-hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. even basic chords, you just a lot. But my guitar playing is really about accompanying the voice. That's what it's there for. And, right. Uh, um, and I love it, you know, and I've played for so long, really since I was a teenager. I can put it down, I can pick it up, the chords are still there, the melodies are still there, words come and go. But um, uh, it's marvelous to have that. I hope I can play as long as I live. That's awesome. I'm, yeah. glad, that, I'm glad that you do play. Um, let's talk a little bit now about really what we really want to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, our local community, Homeless Hospitality Center, first of all, the name, Homeless right. Hospitality Center. Do you know why they put that word hospitality in there? I do. Um, I mean, I don't know the history, but I know what hospitality means. Um, and, and honestly, hospitality has biblical roots. I mean, in our of Western religious traditions, we are required to welcome the stranger. We, we are. And not only the strangers who look like us, or uh, act like us, but or smell nice, different. any stranger. I think that's what it is. And I've heard the term uh, in, at the hospitality center, this idea of radical hospitality. So uh, if you need a place to sleep, if someone needs a place to sleep in New London, and you come, you will, have a, you will be welcomed for that, for that one night and then until things can get kind of squared away. Um, and uh, folks who come to us in whatever situation they have, it might be a short-term thing, somebody's fallen on tough times and needs some helps and needs some referrals, the support is there for that. Not only the Homeless Hospitality Center, but as I mentioned, the network of human services around here is remarkable. Um, <coughs> and for folks who have um, more needs, uh, our goal is simple, to get everybody into a home, into right. housing. Right. So uh, folks who um, may be struggling with uh, mental health issues or um, uh, uh, physical issues or uh, substance use disorder, what have you, um, can be a challenge to find homes for uh, because of income and so on and so forth. So it's our job to find housing for them and the, the, the motto is housing first. So if you're struggling, if you have no income and you're homeless, we're going to do our best to get you into housing if you've been chronically homeless or find a place for you to live again. Because until you have a home, honestly nothing is really possible. It's and, true. And you can't meet someone's spiritual needs until you meet yeah. their basic needs, and that's food and shelter. Yeah, and I think, and we go as far to say, you know, housing is a, is a right. It's a human right. Everyone needs to be housed. I agree. And um, in this community, as in so many across the country, um, there are people and organizations ready to do that. And, uh, uh, I, you know, the, 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 the housing and hunger problem may not be solved, but I do know in New London County, that um, um, if someone comes in and needs help, they will get that help. That's wonderful. Now, what is one of your jobs? What is your right. primary job at the homeless? So I'm a case help? manager, and I work with folks who were formerly chronically homeless. Okay. Who now um, have a home, and uh, it's called permanent supportive housing. So uh, through the state and federal governments, funds are available to support housing so that these folks may have a home. And in some cases, uh, uh, individuals receive uh, a voucher of full funding for their rent and utilities, or those who have some income or benefits may be able to pay, they may pay a share. But the bottom line always is to keep folks housed. So that's the first step. Um, and again, fortunately, we're in a state that really supports that financially, so the funding is there. My role then is to uh, coordinate um, services. And some folks need a lot of support, some don't need that much. It could be as simple as uh, getting somebody some bus passes or uh, a voucher to the laundromat. Um, it's also uh, getting folks to medical appointments, which are terribly important. Transportation is a huge barrier to getting health care and mental health care. So we make sure, and if I can't do it, I try to get uh, transportation for folks. Um, making sure that um, uh, they're getting the food that they need. And again, we have uh, you know, um, uh, wonderful meal programs and pantries throughout the county for folks who are uh, uh, in danger of not having enough food. We also ensure that people are getting the benefits that they deserve, whether that's um, uh, certainly food stamps to begin with, um, as well as uh, uh, Social Security uh, income if they're eligible, uh, as well as some of the state funding as well. 
Uh, and a big part of my job, and a part that I'm still learning, is just navigating the system. Because I know the help is it's there. It's hard. Yeah. Um, it's hard. So I have to be an advocate. I have to be very persistent. I have to make mm -hmm. a lot of phone calls and to try to get that help. And um, so it is a wonderful mix. On one hand, I'm an advocate, too. But uh, also, uh, there's some counseling involved. Because folks who have been homeless um, can be on the margins of the community. So one of the things we're going to do is bring them back into community with others. Um, and to uh, often, I'm simply a companion. I, today, in fact, before I came over, I had lunch with somebody at the at the meal program here in New London. The uh, community the, meal at the meal, yeah, yeah, center. We, yeah, we had lunch together. It's a wonderful and place. We had a good meal. We were just hanging out. Nothing, nothing heavy, but uh, companionship is huge. It is. Um, I mean, we all need companionship. We do. Um, and uh, I, um, you know, I approach this work through the frame of ministry by all means. So. Uh, I know what a difference that can make, uh, just having time with people. So it's very, it's very practical work that we do, but it's also the other side of just being a good friend and companion to people. Now, I think that people think of homeless and they think of the very bottom of, of the totem pole. They think of the drug addicts and the alcoholics. Those are the homeless people. But what does it take to make someone end up homeless? Right. Well, uh, for many, not all, something that I learned, and I was really had my eyes opened. Um, many folks uh, uh, land in homelessness because of difficult childhoods, of, of neglect. Uh, many have, have, have faced childhood traumas and abuse. And that doesn't just go away. It doesn't. You, it's right. always with us. I'm You're astonished right. how many people have had some sort of trauma in their, in their youth. It could be physical or sexual trauma. It could even be, you know, religious abuse. It goes on and on, and that carries with you. So often that's at the core of a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, growing up in, um, you know, in fragmented or dysfunctional families, uh, a mental illness is, of course, very common. I forget the percentage, but a large percentage of our clients have some, some kind of mental illness, which may have been addressed or maybe not. Um, and then uh, folks who also um, uh, uh, fall into substance use uh, over time, be it alcohol or drugs or what have you as well. And many folks have, have, it, have it all. So in but that sense... just lose their job and, and well, homeless yes. very quickly. There's that too. So I'm talking right about people who have that history as well. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's, uh, we, don't, we don't sit in judgment. It's no one's fault. People run into right. hard times. Absolutely. And all we can do is help in the ways that we can. Um, and yes, people who are living paycheck to paycheck uh, can, can um, be homeless. Some of those folks come to us and with a little bit of support, they get back on their feet very quickly, get back into housing and so forth. Um, and that's, I think the point that's, that's necessary here to make is that uh, folks end up being homeless for all sorts of reasons. Exactly. It's something no one chooses to be homeless. Right. No one wants to be that way. Um, and uh, thankfully, the services are here. And it's almost as simple as asking. And then, you know, suddenly the services, you know, I like to think of this embrace, kind of embrace surround you. you. And um, I'm really honored to uh, be a part of that, you know, and to uh, assist my clients. Just day-to-day -day living, looking for any way we can improve quality of life. All right. So some of the, some of the people that are um, involved in this, um, we've got Catherine Zoll. Yes. Who else is involved there that you, you feel really help? Right. Pull, pull the weight. Well, Ron Steed is the deputy director, and he oversees all the housing programs. And then the folks at the shelter um, are, um, 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 the names are escaping me at the moment. Mark uh, is over at the shelter as well. And um, uh, there is the overnight shelter, of course, and then the, and then the, the day hospitality program as well. Um, so we really think about, you know, um, there are so many folks. I don't know all the names yet, but um, the spirit there is remarkable. And now, what exactly does the, quote, hospitality portion of right. the homeless hospitality shelter do? So there's a daytime hospitality center. So uh, folks come in for a cup of coffee, uh, a place, um, uh, there's just a place to hang out. Um, there's internet access there. 
Um, there's uh, nurses can be available. There's actually a, a job service there as well. We call it the, in the help center. Mm -hmm. So just um, uh, getting uh, help with transportation, getting a shower, um, all these things, all these necessary things are there in that program. And if someone is in need and truly does not have a place to stay, of course, then there's the overnight shelter. So there's the day program, the overnight shelter, and then the area that I work in is which is called the housing area. Now, what are the requirements? Can I just walk to the door and say, I don't have a place to sleep tonight? Not exactly. Um, uh, I mean, I'm not sure you'd be turned away. Um, and, um, what I say, and actually this is an opportunity to say, call 211 or go to ct211.com or org. Um, and that's really where the process begins. Okay. And so 211 um, is, and they can very quickly refer you to that. And if you are in need of shelter, very quickly refer you to that shelter and do sort of that preliminary intake. So that's the best, that's the best way to get started. And then once if somebody comes into the shelter, there, there's an intake, the needs are assessed, and then we determine where we go from there. If it's a short-term situation uh, where someone has family or friends or simply needs to get somewhere to get help, or again, if it's somebody who's been chronically homeless, and there's a, uh, it's, um, there's a formula about that, but somebody who truly has been unable to find a home for a period of time as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds almost too good to be true that we have such a wonderful place that is serving this community in such a huge way. I remember, and it wasn't that long ago, it was the 80s, I remember that the homeless population here in New London was so big you saw the people sleeping on the alley or underneath an awning mm -hmm. or in doorways. You saw it. Very rarely, if ever, do I see when I'm driving around at night, right. which I do in my business, do I see people sleeping in doorways or underneath right. awnings anymore. And I think that is 100% due to what the Homeless Hospitality Center has brought to this community. And I just think that it's fabulous that they're doing the work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's wonderful. If anybody wants to help with the homeless hospitality. I know that there's volunteer opportunities. Yes. There's also, um, you can also make donations and yes. that's huge. Mm -hmm. And you can bring things like, um, like um, toiletries and mm -hmm. shampoos and all that stuff. Do you have like in your mind some of the things that we can do to help the homeless hospitality right. center? I mean, uh, donations can be dropped off at the, at the shelter itself and uh, those are distributed as needed. So that's helpful. Um, and certainly there's many volunteers who uh, at the shelter as well. Um, and then most importantly, the financial support uh, really matters. And uh, you can donate online at the website, uh, uh, nlhhc.org. nlhhc.org. If you didn't get it the first time, we'll give it again at the end of the <laughs> Thank show. You. And right at the top, there's a you know a donate button as you'd expect online, um, as well. And um, we're very fortunate to have those donations. We're fortunate to have events like Pass the Guitar and other fundraisers. Uh, the the uh, the Walk Against Homelessness is coming up in April, so that's another way to that's support. That's a big one too. That's a big one. Yeah, it and is. Are you involved in that? No. We'll get I, you involved. I don't. I'm um, not. I'll talk about it on the radio and on TV. But um, no. Here's something I learned years ago. I had done previously done work before my ministry. I was involved in uh, raising money for uh, anti-hunger work in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. But I learned something from my boss at the time. She said, you know, do the one thing you can do. You know, none of us can do everything, but do right. one thing. And that, if that means walking in the walk and raising money, if it means donating uh, some clothing or toiletries, as you say, if, if you can do make a gift, that's really it matters. Um, and I think that's a good, those are good words to live by. And then you've done your part. Right. You know, you've done your part. Do the one thing you can do. I think that um, this show in particular is going to do a lot to help. So one of the things that I learned a long time ago is that something that um, the homeless people don't get and don't have a lot of is especially for the women are, are certain toiletries Mm -hmm. So women's um, health and beauty aids, 
you can go to the dollar store and spend ten dollars and change a woman's life yeah and that's that's not that's not a hearsay that's fact mm -hmm. with ten dollars you can change a woman's whole hmm. persona being able to be clean and smell pretty is a big deal for women mm -hmm. and they can get that at the homeless hospitality center if we give right. if we give the toiletries that come in there are not what the hospitality center is typically going out and spending money on mm -hmm. you know what i mean right. especially the niceties mm -hmm. like a bottle of perfume or some some baby powder or mm -hmm. those are things that women right. like and when they have them they feel better about themselves sure. immediately mm -hmm. You get a shower, you get to put some body powder on, get to put a little perfume on. It changes your whole persona. Mm. So if you're thinking about putting together a bag to bring to the Homeless Hospitality Center, they can always use towels, they can always use single sheets. They're not double beds, they're yes. single beds. Mm -hmm. Single sheets, single blankets, um, to uh, toilet paper, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, hairbrushes, uh, shampoo, all the toiletries that go with it, razors, um, all those things, they can all go together. So give us quick um, your vision for yourself in the next five years. Oh, my goodness. Well, I, I, I want to continue doing this work that I'm doing uh, okay. as a case manager, um, continuing to serve people one-on-one -on -one, uh, and learning this system here and really being even more uh, able to bring uh, services and benefits uh, to the people that I serve. Um, I think the most rewarding thing is to see people improve their quality of life, regain their dignity, um, engage, become good citizens and part of the community, and um, uh, to live the best lives that they can. And you're going to help do that, and I'll I think that's wonderful. Again, Thank that um, website is nlhhc.org. Yes. So please go there and check it out and see what you can do to help. David, would you be kind enough to take us out with a song? I'd be happy to. Thank you. Absolutely. So while David's getting ready to take us out with a song, I would hope that you've learned something today. I would hope that something that we've said today, something that we've offered you about the Homeless Hospitality Center has tweaked you. We're in the Thanksgiving season. Mm -hmm. There's people without a home. There's people without the basic needs. Let's do what we can, okay? Reach out, help somebody. You know what, if you smile at somebody, it may be the only smile they see today. I would request that you do that. You know how I feel about this community. You know how I feel about you guys. Until next week, everybody, God bless and have a really great week. Bye-bye. Some bright morning when this life is old, on my way to a home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I sound hallelujah by and by. I'll life are gone, I'll fly away, like a bird from these prison bars has flown, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, And then I'll fly away.